Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Ji Xiangjun with Arthur. Hello, everyone. And Francis. Hi, everyone. Salut. Vous allez bien? That's French. You're busy. busy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, haven't seen you for a while. And uh, yeah. you've got some new costumes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I went back home to Cameroon and I brought some material from there. This right. is Cameroon traditional uh, uh, tissue, you know, uh -huh. the cloth. And uh -huh. then I made it in the, in the Chinese, 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 Chinese way. Chinese style. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you're um, now wearing some thing, totally what Western. we call the Western suit yes. in China. So That's this is indeed <laughs> crossover. Yeah, crossover. Cross is cross, over. cross culture, you know. Uh, it's <laughs> Francis, you've been living in China for how many years? Eight years. Eight already. years. More than, a little bit more, yeah. And mostly you're now involved in lots of these cross-cultural events, introducing each other's cultures to China and back home yeah. in, in Cameroon. Yeah, of course. And uh, since a couple of years, like since 2009, I've been made ambassador of China Africa Cultural Exchange. All right. Yeah. So it's, so, uh, it's a huge. Uh, I'm glad to meet you, Your Excellency, Ambassador. Would be good. Remember, talking about ambassadors of different yeah. cultures, and there's yeah. been a very famous figure in history 700 years ago. Yeah. So here is a little test to the ambassador. You tell me the name. The guy is from Italy. From Italy. Ah, oh, you, you must be talking about Marco Polo. Marco Polo. Yeah, in Chinese we call him Marco Polo. Marco that sounds Polo. like pineapples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's Marco Polo. Ma yeah, Marco Polo. Now, uh, uh, I first they... thought about, when you first said it, I thought about Chenghe, because we just talked about Africa. Yes. And then you told uh -huh. me yes. about this, I thought about Chenghe, but it's not only 700 years. But how, how, how famous or how important is Marco Polo, say, in the history of cross-cultural communication? Okay, uh, Marco Polo is the, uh, we say that's, we believe mm. that's the guy bring a lot of Chinese uh, things to Europe. Mm. And he was uh, born, I think, uh, 1275. Mm -hmm. We believe that in 1295, he was in China and traveled together with his uncle. So that's uh, some of the merchant. And then we have went back, so the history being very hazy, so there's no clear record of what really happened, but uh, we believe he had an extensive traveling experience in China, mm -hmm. and uh, also there was belief that he was the governor of a very small city in, in the south, in China, so for like three a years. Chinese official? Yeah, a very small city for a Chinese official for three mm -hmm. years. So even nowadays, we believe the Italians, the noodles, spaghetti, and all those things will have mm -hmm. influence yeah. from mm -hmm. China because he brought this cooking from China to uh, Europe. Mm. And also, he wrote uh, his travels, he's called travels. Journals. About China, mm. uh, journals about China. So that's give a first glimpse of what China is, a big empire with a very, a lot of riches and a very uh, different culture. So mm. the first time people be began to know there are other people live on the earth. Mm. So at that time, it was very, getting very close to Renaissance time. Mm. That's all gives some belief that if you travel around the world, we might come across other civilizations. Right. So Europeans began, we are not alone. And the, that's also the time Europeans began to try to explore the world. Mm -hmm. So that's a revolutionary discovery to find that the earth is actually, it's not a square it's, with a cover on the top. Actually, yeah. so that culture exchange also uh, gives uh, a lot of incentives for people to get to know each other. And right. also, uh, the result we reach be to understanding that to avoid a lot of conflict between cultures. So it's good and bad sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> what, what would you well, write about China when you go back, say, to Cameroon? I, I already started writing, you know, mm -hmm. especially for my kids and for my the other yes. coming generation. Yes. Because there's so much to discover and to share about Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. But mostly I focus on those points that are very close to African culture. Mm -hmm. They are so the similarities. Much of them, similarities uh -huh. Yeah. So what's and the uh, most similarity found between the two cultures? Yeah, you have one on my body right now. <laughs> 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 the right there. Right here. <laughs> Well, would you, then, be crowned, uh, would you like to be crowned, say, modern Marco Polo from Africa? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, 
No, I, I'm not imitating Marco Polo. <laughs> I'm not trying okay. to imitate him. Yeah, you're the but, first uh, Francis from Yeah, Cameroon. I'm Francis from I, see, I believe you have done more than Marco Polo could do. Well, no. I wouldn't compare. <laughs> you know? Basically, what, what is happening uh, now is actually in Hangzhou. That's the capital city, the uh -huh. beautiful city in yeah. Zhejiang province. Zhejiang. The capital city of Zhejiang province in east part of the country that's further south to Shanghai, actually, Shanghai, yeah. southwest mm -hmm. to Shanghai. It's about now it's only 30 minutes high-speed train from Shanghai to Hangzhou. Mm -hmm. And the government of the, uh, well, the Tourism Bureau of Hangzhou, they've introduced this new policy. They're looking for modern-day Marco mm -hmm. Polo. And basically, that's like the best job. Yeah, that's over there. Yeah. These <laughs> days. Now, yeah. Think about that, Francis. Yeah. Well, you could uh, recommend me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to recommend you. You can just go apply for yourselves. Yeah. Okay. Now, in Hangzhou, there is saying the job, it's for, for a year. And the reward for that is 15 days of uh, a comprehensive tour of Hangzhou. And the salary for that one year is 40,000 euro. Yeah, that's for a year. That sounds yeah. Yeah. That's more nice, than 30, very attractive. That's more than 30,000 mm -hmm. renminbi. And uh, what yeah. uh, they are required to do, basically, nothing. It's just, you know, post messages on Twitter, mm -hmm. on a, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook and to be, you know, the one, the man or the woman, you know, in uh, promo they're about to produce and try to be, uh, you're, you're going to be the consultant if there is any campaign organized by the uh, mm -hmm. uh, authority to promote the travel business industry of Hangzhou. And basically, oh, that's good. all. So for a year, uh, 40,000 euros. This is um, a little poster we can see. Uh, you should find it available online. So if yeah. you are indeed interested in being that oh, ambassador yeah. or what we call the modern day Marco Polo, you may yeah. want to log on to that website to check out further information. Yeah. Uh, so yeah for I, me, it's really attractive. And uh, it it's, it's also a great uh, weapon, I mean, positively, uh -huh. weapon mm. to to uh, advertise or expand Chinese culture all over mm -hmm. the world because mm -hmm. actually you have more and more foreigners who are really getting involved in Chinese culture mm -hmm. and who like to share it with their own countrymates mm -hmm. or abroad, you know. Yeah. That's good policy, good, yeah. good design. Uh, I, uh, I totally agree. That's a uh, great policy and it's very creative. And mm -hmm. I think it's very smart because uh, nowadays you have to look at who are You're the consumers mm -hmm. and how they consume mm -hmm. and where they got this information. We have the survey shows that over like 70% of the travelers, when they make decisions, they're based on the knowledge they collected mm -hmm. from the internet. So now the social uh, interaction is, is extensive. They use the platforms mm -hmm. like Twitter, Facebook. In China, we have the WeChat, have mm -hmm. over yeah. like 300 oh, wow. million users right now. Yeah. So that would be a, a huge potential. That we call that the eyeball economy, right? You yeah. catch people's eyeballs. Attention eyeball and, economy. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. attention economy. And so you get a potential customers. So they are using the new form, new platforms, new media. We call new social media to yep. get the attention and get the customers. It's very smart. Mm -hmm. It's actually the spending less, like getting more. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, because it's not new and remember about one two years ago there was that campaign about for probably the best job in the world oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah course, in yeah. australia great it's barrier true. reef we're looking yeah. some island guardian yeah. or whatever and to clean in the, the, the pools and all these, I remember. the best yeah. job and that's yeah. uh, indeed a, a very very creative yeah. uh, campaign but you have to look at what the uh, Chinese tourist board from all the different, different provinces have been doing over the 30 years. Mm -hmm. More or less the same kind of things. They go to uh, overseas travel shares, mm. uh, they set up booths, have the nice posters, and they have the yeah. video discs give to you. And it's always the same. Yeah. And, uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but not, basically yeah, they're yeah. doing something new. The new generation are mm. changing their approach to the information. So yeah. the old ways are no longer working. So that's why they come up out with new idea. It's relatively new to the uh, Chinese tourist professionals, mm. the new way of approaching the customers. I remember yeah. Yeah, uh, about last year or the year before in Sichuan, remember mm -hmm. Chengdu is famous, famous yeah. for its uh, giant pandas. pandas. pandas yeah, and course, it yeah. seems they're not doing it every year. The, they were looking for pan, pan ambassadors. Yeah. 
Yeah. Panda ambassadors. <laughs> Panda <laughs> ambassadors. <laughs> and yeah. they found six of them from different countries. countries yeah. uh -huh. And that was, you know, a, a very idea. unique experience. So uh -huh. do you think this kind of practice, since mm. this is no news to, to us anymore, yeah. mm -hmm. those two news for this industry, but for the consumers is something, you know, that sounds similar to us. At do this, you think that's going to work? I think it's very tricky <clears throat> and it's going to be very, it's going to work definitely because they are going through these new uh, modern media, you know, uh -huh. through web war, Facebook and all this, uh -huh. you know, who abroad doesn't go on web war or Facebook every day. If they would go through this kind of ancient way of, I mean, burning CDs, DVDs, giving to people, nobody watches this, you know. No. You take it as a present, you say thank I you. I wouldn't. And you throw it somewhere <laughs> at home, yeah. Uh -huh. But doing through yeah. this uh, social network is really powerful. It's a very powerful tool. Mm. It reminds me the way Obama went through his uh, campaign. We're not talking about that, but. Yeah. That was a very, very powerful tool for him. You know. mm. that's, that's another way we are talking about uh, a new way of promotion of yeah. tourist destinations. That's, we, we call that we have the customers involved yeah. in the forming a travel plan. Mm. So that is the new approach is that they willingly or unwillingly participate mm. in a travel plan right now because they are putting in their reactions, responses to mm. the travel experiences. They say, why don't you do this? Why don't you take a look at that? Mm. Yeah. So in this way, the whole process will come out with a totally different kind of experience. Yes. Even though you're going to the same place, mm. but you see different things from different angles. So mm. that's why I think it's very smart and creative. Well, uh, let's take a break now. And uh, we say that's all part of that PR campaign of the local tourist, tourism industry. And uh, sometimes PR, good PR, sometimes mm. what happened in one place might not be a good PR. We we'll talk about one event that happened recently, about one hot uh, travel destination for Chinese tourists. You're watching Crossover. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Crossover. And today we're now talking about tourism. And we have Francis and we have Arthur. Have you heard about this? And this is mainly a very small uh, incident. And um, it's only it's been mentioned in one of these articles uh, provided by someone online. Anyway, you can mm. see it on the website. It's about uh, Chinese tourist experience. It's not been verified, uh, but somehow the story has been there. It's more about uh, Maldives, talking about yeah. those, you know, all these hotels and all these, uh, w w what are they yeah. called? All these fancy, you know, seaside rooms. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've heard about that too. And it, the story is about the uh, <laughs> water boilers. I remember yeah. Chinese people, we always drink boiled water. Yeah. Hot or not hot, but it's always boiled water. The story is about the uh, local, say, tourism runners or hotels, and they intentionally took away all these boilers from the rooms where you know Chinese tourists are staying just in case they're not spending much in the uh, restaurants of those hotels because sometimes Chinese tourists would bring with them uh, instant noodles or some, some, something they can cook themselves and in that case they won't be going to the restaurants and according to this report according to this story has been done by these hotel runners intentionally uh, to push them Mm. to those you know restaurants in the hotel that means the uh, expenditure will be guaranteed in these mm. in restaurants and this certainly <coughs> is a bad pr has been denied by uh, those hotel the hotel, owners. hotel runners yeah. and they say uh, it might be happening because you know they 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 have there could be some uh, uh, mechanical say problems you know it's or maybe some of the boilers are out of order they need yeah. to have to have them fixed yeah uh, do, well, do you think I, it's a I, true story? Uh, well, I, read, story? I read about that and I just smiled, you know, because since I've been living in China for over eight years, I've been hearing all kinds of stories like this, you know, <laughs> including about Chinese people, the way they behave towards foreigners mm -hmm. or some foreigners, the way they behave towards toward Chinese. I think uh, the, the thing might have happened to one case somewhere, yes. somebody, and then people make it just a national case. Like it's already a national rule. Maybe it's written okay. in the in the constitution that you have to do that to, to our Chinese people. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this. Mm. Maybe some guy exactly faced the problem, but I, I don't think we should put it like really uh, the whole government of that country is against all Chinese tourists 
it can't be this way because that the hotel be ridiculous the, the hotel, for them to very do so, ridiculous yeah. mm. and the hotel runners they want to make money mm. to make money first you have to receive the guests in your hotel please him let him come back next time but by restricting this not allowing him to feel at ease to feel comfortable for sure you're not running business your, mm. your business is going down nobody no. will come back next time you're in this business <laughs> so do you believe this story uh, it, uh, it's hard because I've been travel I've been traveling extensively to uh -huh. Europe uh, Africa America and uh, it always happens you know we uh, our countrymen bring uh, you know the spoilers with them because they like to drink tea and hot water uh, there's a special hotel in Europe and uh, you want to have the cold water you don't have hot water mm. but we never had the, this event like these people come in and confiscate your border and <laughs> things like that. So I think, like Francis said, it might, uh, it might happen to some individuals, but it's, it is a little bit exaggerated. Mm. I don't believe a hotel at this category could be stupid enough to do things like that <laughs> because yeah. you are actually sending away uh -huh. your biggest customer, customer. group. Mm -hmm. Chinese are the major customer group in that area, we mm. know about that because we're sending hundreds of people over there. Mm. So I think we need to sit down, come down, look at matter. It's an individual case, so it happens to everybody. Mm. So for many years, Chinese have been traveling there. The first time we heard about this story. So first, I think, if this happened, I think it, it, it probably... Might have happened. Yeah, yeah. It might have happened, but it's that serious. I don't believe so. Mm. And there's another point that we should <laughs> yes. complete in this, you know. Let, let's suppose that I'm a hotel runner, okay, and I say, okay, this guy is always boiling water in his room or boiling these uh, noodles, so he's not eating the restaurant. But is he paying, is he living free in that room? <laughs> no, he's paying the rent. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's, the main, that's the main income right, that I make as right. a runner. I'm, my main income is not the restaurant downstairs, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. And another point, mm. what foreigners don't understand, I mean, mm -hmm. those who haven't lived in China, mm. Mm -hmm. They think Chinese use boil water just for the noodles. Mm -hmm. But this is wrong, <laughs> completely wrong. Uh -huh. Chinese uh, use hot water for almost everything. To yep. drink tea, to, 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 I don't know, for everything. Mm. But it's not just, and who can eat these noodles 24 hours a day? Mm -hmm. Nobody does that. You eat it once in a while. That's right. If that's you eat right. it every day, morning, noon, and evening, you're going to get... So very, that's very actually a, 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 a different perspective, a different mm -hmm. complaint people are now making. And you said it's important for all these tourists to feel at home, yeah. wherever they're traveling, right? That's but right. the thing is, maybe it's still something new to the uh, global, say, to, especially to overseas uh, tourist in, uh, tourism industry. Uh, that's not only recently they're now re receiving this increasing number of Chinese tourists. So maybe the industry is not ready yet. So uh, for Chinese yeah. tourists, and we sometimes complain, well, beautiful sceneries, uh, nice people, but yeah. food? No. <laughs> I love Chinese food. I just want to eat something yeah. Chinese. Exactly. But can we find yeah. anything Chinese, not to mention it on those islands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, even you, Europe yeah. won't be able to find that that yeah. easily. You have a great comment about uh, the industry is not ready for Chinese group. Mm. I have an in-depth discussion with the tourist board from Sweden and also the uh, Vice Minister of uh, Tourism and Sport from Poland. So we discussed about those issues because a lot of hotels are not really ready for Chinese because uh, there are no signs for Chinese hotels or facilities. Mm. There's no preparations about you know, letting Chinese know they have the convenience in the hotel rooms. Mm. About the second part about the uh, Chinese cannot eat noodles, instant noodles there, so they could consume in the hotel. I don't think that is uh, true because the people eating noodles are also the same bunch of people buying Louis Vuitton in, in the uh, shops. They don't, mm -hmm. It's just after a while, they're uh -huh. getting... They a little bit, Chinese flavor, Chinese taste. Yeah, they're getting a little bit fed up with the, uh, the, Western, the food. Western food because mm -hmm. there's so much meat and uh, not, not much green vegetables. Mm -hmm. So they have to have something that's very close to Chinese food. So the instant noodles is That's the, the closest thing the we can closest get. Thing they could get. I think if the hotels industries, uh -huh. uh, if they know better, I think the hotel should say, promote the hotel, say, we have instant noodles in the hotel. You don't have to bring that from China. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. That yeah. helps solve the problem. Yes. They could uh, get the instant noodles 
from the hotel, even who don't have, have them to cook them. Because in some countries, like yeah. in Australia and New Zealand, you're not allowed to bring in anything like that, any, <laughs> any food at all, of, of any form. Let's take a break first. We'll continue <laughs> that discussion after that. You're watching Crossover. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Crossover. And today we're now talking about uh, Chinese tourists and the possible complaints they might have. And before the break, Arthur mentioned, it seems... Uh, the uh, industry, the tourism industry, especially in, in other countries for Chinese tourists, are not quite ready mm. yet. So what are the other complaints they might be making for Chinese tourists? Uh, one of the most uh, embarrassing difficulties I've found in foreign countries is that at the airports, train stations, especially if you are moving between the countries, the European countries, um, sometimes get very confused. So mm. which terminals I should go to? For example, you go to Italy, you take the train to France. So you only know which train you will be on like 15 minutes before the train really starts. The, the platform. So mm -hmm. you are running about with big suitcases. There's no mm. sign saying that, uh, I mean, saying in Chinese that mm. which train is going to Milan, which train is going to uh, Marseille, you mm. don't know. So as a result, the Chinese were running about with lots of suitcases, and then the local people were getting a little bit annoyed. The Chinese were shouting and moving around, getting away. So when I'm talking with the tourist board, I have been advising them, if you uh, seriously want Chinese tourists to be around, please put up some sign in Chinese. Uh, in Chinese, saying that this is the direction going to Milan, this is the direction going to Marseille. Mm. Because majority of Chinese traveling outside, they do not speak, they do not speak a word foreign language. Mm. So, they always rely on translators. Yeah. Even, even in some of the restaurants, especially mm. like, um, you know, you go to dinners, and they have a very different, you know, the, the table manners in China. But mm. you can help to educate. I advise them, when Chinese people check into the customers, when you chop on the passport, you insert a small booklet or some, just some, some tips, uh, yeah, tips mm. into the passport in Chinese. Mm. Uh, these are small things you need to be especially be careful because it's very different from you think Chinese what getting used will, to in China. But do you think Chinese tourists will feel, say, uh, humiliated? by those tips. No, by this, why I'm saying that, instead of putting on the wall, mm. saying that, do not spit here in Chinese, do not shout in Chinese, you put in the passport. Mm. On one hand, you pass the message. On the other hand, you save the face for Chinese because you are not telling Chinese what to do mm. in a public setting. Mm. It's a pri like private conversation. Mm. I'm telling you, those things could be very humiliating. Mm. If you do that, this thing could be very embarrassing for you if mm. you do that. But I do not tell you this in front of others. Other people. So mm. I put into your passport <coughs> very small booklet or small just piece of paper saying those are customers here. You but, might have problem yeah. with. We, uh, I've discussed that with many friends, and yeah. uh, <laughs> some consider that you know, if they do put the. The sign. the sign only in one language. It's mm -hmm. uh, according to the past experience where they notice that only those who read this sign mm -hmm. usually do that. Yes. But I think one way to save the face would be to put it, to still put it publicly, but in different, different languages. languages. Yes. At least That's another language. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. But on the other hand, if you put it in English and French, mm -hmm. then you're making it, you're making French guys lose face too. <laughs> because from the primary school, they know, from the kindergarten, they know they shouldn't uh -huh. do that. Yeah. Right. So it's <laughs> if we come back to the side of tourists, do you think Chinese market, Chinese industry, say tourism industry, because you're in there, uh -huh. do you think this industry is ready for these, you know, the influx of foreign tourists? Because you mentioned actually, you know, many markets, many industries in other countries, they're not ready yet for Chinese tourists. But uh -huh. what about Chinese industry? Uh, I cannot say it's 100% satisfactory to the foreign tourists because I'm not in a position to speak for them. But in China, actually, the, uh, we call it inbound tourism. Mm -hmm. That's for foreigners come to China. We've been doing that for 30 years. So that was given a priority to develop. Mm. So the outgoing business only started like in, 19, uh, in, 19, in like 2000. Uh, domestic style in 1995. So you can see that we have 
at least 25 years before uh, the other sectors to develop inbound. So all the infrastructures, hotels, railway, airplanes, yeah. all at least bilingual. Mm. So we're doing our, trying our best to fit into the customers or the language or the habit or the hotels cooking the Western food. So we've been trying to fit into their uh, customers, their habit, their, you know. And uh, so honestly, I don't know. For it's, it's mixed responses. Some mm -hmm. people say are really impressed, you know, how China being so well prepared for us. Others yeah. say, okay, they've been prepared, but it's a little bit weird because it's not exactly what prepared we in are. In, in, yeah. wrong in way, the wrong we, way. Yeah. And uh, not exactly uh, because uh, the uh, industry think that should be what they need. But uh, it's still a little bit distant from uh, what they really need. But at the end, the people are still very impressed because mm -hmm. you tried. Mm -hmm. The attitude is there. In our business, we have three words to give the importance of what you do. We call it A, S, and K. So attitude first, then service the second, yeah. knowledge the third. Mm. So in serving service business, so your attitude is always people really getting impressed of. So that's why something you know you cannot 100% achieve it, but you've been trying. It's so interesting that is, you mentioned yeah. that A and that yeah, S, because attitude K. is important. Maybe that's where lots of Chinese tourists would find themselves lost a little bit when traveling yes, in yes, Europe, yes. in America, because, mm. hey, how come these hotels are so small? Uh -huh, this yes. is supposed to be a five-star hotel. Uh -huh. How come my room is only like, you know, like this yeah. small? It's just a tiny part of the yes. hotel rooms that I'm yeah. used to back yeah. home in China. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in the 1980s, when the foreigners come to Beijing to Great Wall, and they see a huge house by the route, saying the restroom. So they're getting ready to go to the toilet. We're going there, it's actually a restaurant. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and All so right. this, this kind of, uh, okay. you got lost in the translations. Yes. But still, they are very happy. They read a letter to me that we are really impressed. We saw that, uh, <laughs> that uh, mm. toilet, but it's yes. actually a restaurant. Yeah. And it's a place to sit down and have a, have a cup rest. of tea and have rest. Have so rest. we call it a restroom. <laughs> restroom. <laughs> but <clears throat> if you go to a lot of European countries, and uh, there's at least even not something like that. No Chinese at all. Uh, no Chinese at all. Uh, they're not trying. So that's, that's well, to give an idea.